Hello everyone, this is my new acquisition from Japan and I pull it out uh, to verify and tune if needed uh, the bias uh, adjustments. So this is the last stereo good MOSFET amplifier from Sony, model TA-FA 777ES. And guys, it works just wow. All right, now I just removed the screws and let's take a look inside. So as you may see, a large power transformer, super large power capacitors, Nichicon fine gold all around, copper pl plated radiators or heat sinks. Wow, what a beast. And the sound which is coming out of it is, is a super. I'm really, really excited how it sounds. Comparing to Rotel, this one sounds way more detailed and warmer vocal range. And uh, I'm in love with the sound, really. The first time I have heard the sound when I was visiting my friend and he played me Aquaphase, uh, which uh, was, again, like, I believe it was E5000 model, which is uh, MOSFET. And like, um, guys, MOSFET amplifiers sound differently. And I was looking and targeting to find the one, but I cannot afford Aquaphase because those are way too expensive. Uh, the good one starts from $8,000 and quickly going up. All right, so uh, here is the MOSFETs. You may see them right there. All right. So what's so big about this? Uh, this amp um, has uh, twice less power than Rotel. Vettel is 200 watts per channel and this one is just 100 watts per channel for 8 ohm. And Japanese version were stated like uh, 80 watts per channel at 8 ohm. Uh, however, uh, what else? Um, damping factor. This guy claimed just 100, Rotel claimed 600. But you wouldn't believe how differently this works with my Bowers and Wilkins speakers. Uh, I wouldn't say, and my friends say that my speakers never was sounding that good before. All right. So I definitely will record a Sonic demo. So you would be able to taste it and tell me what you think. But it just wow breathtaking all right and i never go above 30 percent of power because it's it's enough so i <laughs> if i go higher it's pretty hard to sit in this room so power is there all right now it's heating up i will connect the wires so sony boot connectors right there you see, so I would need carefully connect and measure the bias. All right, so let me connect everything and I meet you there. Okay, everyone, and now when wires are connected, I'm using uh, my plastic tool <laughs> to get in and push uh, connectors uh, onto pins. And now we have everything connected right here. All right. So after power on, it shows 61 millivolts. We need to get to 70, but we need to give like 15 minutes to get it warm up and then set it up. See, starting to slowly rise. So let's see if it's on 70 or not, but it would be good to verify to make sure that all after all these years, it still performs up to spec. 
What else? Uh, this amplifier is full MOSFET, including from the input circuitry, like uh, when it even eliminates uh, input capacitors. So you should not connect RCA cables when this uh, amplifier is powered up because you can easily kill your FET transistors on the inputs and that would be a big problem, right? And uh, almost in while we're waiting, it's already heating up 63. Uh, you see, uh, Sony started to install Nichicon fine gold capacitors and this happened at around like uh, year 2000. And uh, if you take a look on the videos about Sony N1 and E1 amplifiers, you would also see the Nichicon fine gold capacitors there as well. So that's the best <laughs> they could do with these amplifiers. All right, so now you understand why I'm using Nichicon fine gold everywhere I can. Unfortunately, like it's it's it just like unbelievable that this capacitor has been discontinued, right? So there is official statement that uh, Nichicon will not produce these capacitors anymore. Do you like it or not like it? But that's how everything works. While we're waiting, uh, what else? I'm using it with uh, direct sound output. So it's disconnect balance port here and treble and bass ports here. And it's just as good as it is. I don't need to use these ports with my speakers. It sounds incredible. Right, the power. It's a large and hefty knob. And I never go more than like 30% like to hear because like it's it's already loud as much as it is. What else I like about this amplifier is the possibility uh, to connect three cassette decks, uh, inputs and outputs. And I can vary recording like what source I'm use from the front panel, switch to the source to listen, I can listen like uh, the deck when I'm recording because uh, it's automatically connected uh, my input source for recording uh, using this knob. And I can turn on and off the output record circuitry just to have a pure sound possible. All right. And it's, it's, it's coming up, it's 66 already. So, I will get back to you when 15 minutes pass. So I will measure on both sides what the parameters are. I believe I would not need to touch it, looking into the numbers, but let's see, see you soon. Okay guys, after uh, amplifier has heated up, we have 69 to 70 on the left side and 70 to 71. So we're jumping uh, between one or other value on the right side. So I believe I don't need to touch anything. Amplifier is in very good condition and I can just close it up. All right. Thanks for being with me. I, I hope you enjoyed the internal look onto the design Sony made with this amplifier. And I hope you would see it in my following videos uh, when I will demonstrate the sound of different decks and so on. See you soon. Bye-bye.